Here we are. Today we're talking about something that's very, very important to your real life and your money and your growth and just about everything else in life, and that's exponential functions. And we're talking about right now, what is the difference between a normal kind of function and an exponential function? So here's a typical function. I'm gonna make it a little bigger here. y equals x to the third plus 2x squared minus 7x plus 2, and here's its graph. This is a function that has exponents in it. No big deal. Most of them do. But now, exponential functions are different. When you have an exponential function, the variable, let's see, the variable is in the exponent. Here we go. The variable is in the exponent when we're working with exponential functions. So y equals three to the x has its graph right here and notice y equals three to the x, okay? The x is in the exponent. It's not down here. And over here we have y equals one third to the x. These are cl closely related. They're the same graph, but they go in different directions. And notice that exponential functions are one-to-one. -one. They pass the horizontal line test. We talked about that yesterday. They pass the horizontal line test, and so they're one-to-one, -one, and therefore they have inverse functions, which we're gonna talk about tomorrow. But right now we're talking about exponential functions. And you're going to get to meet something else. Euler's function. This is pronounced Euler, even though in English it's pronounced Euler. But Euler is Euler because uh, this person was German, one of the greatest mathematicians who ever lived. And so the number E was named after him. E is prominent in exponential functions and especially in the inverse functions to exponential functions. And this is the number that it comes close to equaling. We say E is about, about 2.7. Almost three, but not quite. So now let's get on with what we're doing today, which is not to go more deeply into analyzing exponential functions, not now. But instead, we're going to talk about money because exponential functions are very closely related to compound interest. And indeed, this is the compound interest formula, and notice that you have variables, one in particular, T, up here in the exponent. We're going to be working with that today. So let's talk about A equals P parentheses one plus R over N, close parentheses, raised to the nt power. We have to talk about what all those mean. There's a lot for you to know here and a lot for you to memorize. A is the amount of money, say a savings account. Say we're talking about a savings account. 
A is the amount of money that you accumulate over time for the amount of time your savings account is is a savings account until you take all the money out. P is the amount of money you initially put into the account. That's what the amount of money you open your savings account with. That's P, principal. R is the interest rate written as a decimal. T is time in years. And in, now this is probably one of the most important numbers in real life that you can learn about, and that is the number of compounding periods per year. And a compounding period is a time per year, because you can have one per year, you can have two per year, you can have four per year, Okay, um, th this is the number of times per year, every year, that, that your money, that your interest on your money is calculated by the bank, and then that interest, that amount of money, is put back into account A, so that account A grows. And then after that, every time that interest is calculated and put back into your account, the account grows and keeps growing until you shut down your account. This is, this account is the basic account for a lot of the other financial formulas that you're going to encounter in life, especially if you become a business major. Now, there are names for each compounding period. If n equals one, that's called annual. If n equals two, semi-annual. If n equals four, quarterly. And this is the most common um, um, occurrence of compounding periods. Most accounts have their interest compounded quarterly, but some have their interest compounded every month. So it is 12 and that's monthly. And rarely money is compounded daily, every day, and that would be called um, daily, not yearly, daily. I have to change that. D-A-I-L-Y. Now there is another compounding period. If your money is compounded every little part of a second, every hour, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, in the year, that's called continuous compounding. That's the theoretical upper limit of growth possible for your money in any particular account, in any interest bearing account. And that has a completely different formula that we're going to talk about after Thanksgiving break. So now let's work a problem. And you'll see how this works. On Melissa's sixth birthday, she gets a $2,000 CD that earns 4% interest, compounded semi-annually. We're gonna have to make sense out of all that. If the CD matures on her 15th birthday, how much money will be available? 
OK, we're going to need to read this again. And it's not unusual to read word problems several times before you start to make sense of them. Well, remember what we're doing is we're looking at everything in light of this formula. A equals P parentheses one plus R over N parentheses close to the N T power. Okay. Now, Melissa's having a birthday party and maybe a rich uncle gives her a $2,000 CD. That's P. It hasn't earned any interest yet. Here we have 4% interest. 4% has to be turned into a decimal. To do this, you take the four and you divide it by 100. You would put that in your calculator and the answer you would get would be 0 0.04. That's what R equals in this particular problem. Now, her interest is going to be compounded semi-annually. That means N equals two. Her interest is going to be compounded twice a year. Now, the CD is going to mature. That means Melissa will be able to take it out and spend the money on her fifth birthday. So she's going to have to wait from the time she's six years old until she's 15. So T is going to equal 15 minus six, which is nine years. Melissa's going to have to wait nine years before she can cash in her $2,000 CD. Okay, now that we know what all of our letters mean, let's calculate this. A, the amount after time after 15 years is going to equal the original amount, $2,000, parentheses one, plus R, which is 0 0.04, over N, which is two, raised to the N T power. That's going to be two times nine. So let's see, this is going to be 2000, parentheses one plus 0 0.04, you don't really have to put that zero in, you could just say 0 0.04. It does kind of help you not make a mistake. Over two, the number of compounding periods, close your parentheses. Now N times T is going to be two times nine. which is going to be 18. So let's see, one plus 0 0.04 over two. Let's figure out what that is. This is the way your book is asking you to do it. So I'm going to do it too. One plus 0 0.04 divided by two. That's 1.02. So this is going to be 2000. Parentheses 1.02 raised to the 18th 
power. That's what we have to calculate. That's what I'm going, going to do right now. We're going to have, and I'm going to bring this down here so I can see what I'm typing. Okay, 2000 parentheses 1.02 parentheses closed to the 18th power. 2000 parentheses 1.02 parentheses closed carrot 18. And it's always a good idea to hit the right arrow key and bring your cursor down. But you don't have to. All right, I now am going to hit enter. All right, Melissa is going to have this much money to play with when she's 15 years old. How much do you want to bet it won't last for a week? But Melissa's going to have a whole new wardrobe and maybe a down payment on a car. Not a new car, but maybe a used car. Well, let's see. We normally round US dollars to two decimal places. So the third decimal place is two. That will not cause the nine to round up to a three, uh, up to it. That will not cause 49 to round up to 50. So our answer is going to be 2856, $2,856.49. Two thousand eight hundred fifty six and forty nine cents. This many dollars and this many cents in the hands of a teenager. This could be truly dangerous. OK, do you want to discuss any of this? We have several problems we're going to do, and I think by the time we're finished, this will make sense if it doesn't already. Well, can, you, can you go with one? One second. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Great. All right, now here's a problem. Suppose that $58,000 is invested at 3.5% interest compounded quarterly. Find the function for the amount to which the investment grows after T years. Well, that's A. They're asking for the formula for A. We have a general formula, but we need to find the specific formula for this problem. So let me write the general formula. A equals P parentheses one plus R over N raised to the N T power. And the first thing we have to do, there's also a B question, but the first thing we have to do is go from what's called the general, general compound interest formula
we need to calculate the specific specific compound interest formula for this particular problem and not for any other problem. Okay, here we go. For this, you got to go back. All right, we're going to have to go back and do some some work. We have to reread the problem, especially that first sentence. Suppose that $58,000 is invested. This is the amount of money that's going to be invested. Hasn't been invested yet. This is P. Now it's going to be invested at three and a half percent interest. Let's bring that down here. Three and a half percent equals 3.5 percent. 0.5 is one half. Now, for me to be able to use a percent in a problem, I have to change it to a decimal. So what I have to do is take the 3.5 and divide it by 100, which will cause the decimal point to move two places to the left. But let's do it the way we're supposed to do it just in case someone here is a little unfamiliar with this process. So 3.5 divided by 100, enter. That's 0 0.035 or 0 0.035. This right here is what R equals. Okay, R does not equal this. You have to work with it first to get it in decimal form. Now, compounded quarterly means in equals four. So now we're ready to construct. I'm going to come back up here and put the finished formula up here. So we're going to construct the specific formula right here. 58,000, that's what P is. Parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.035 or 0 0.035 over 4, parentheses closed, raised to the 4 T. Now this is the formula, and instead of an X, you're going to have a T. T and X are often used interchangeably. In fact, I would hazard a guess that in real life problems, T is probably used more often than X. Okay, now here's how the problem, this is how you're gonna have to answer in order to get your problem correct you're going to have to calculate what's inside the parentheses. So one plus 0 0.035 divided by four. And then I double check to make sure 
I clicked on the right numbers and I did enter. That's going to be 1.00875. Then it stops. This is a terminating decimal. So we don't have to round it. So let me see, I'll write it like this. 58,000. Parentheses. One. Mm, one point. Zero, zero, eight, seven, five. To the four T power. This is going to be my specific problem, uh, my specific compounding interest formula for this problem. So let me write it up here. A equals 58,000 parentheses 1.00875 to the 4T, and I'm going to make absolutely sure that that is correct. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, this will go in your answer box. You might even need to put A in there. I don't know. Okay. Actually, you probably do. So let's get rid of this because they're asking for the formula, the specific formula. So let's put a blue answer box around the whole thing. We're going to use that formula to answer all the questions in part B. Now here's part B. Find the amount of money in the account after T equals zero years, three years, seven years, and 10 years. So don't worry, this is all gonna be on the calculator. You are not going to need to really do any algebra. You're not going to need to do any algebra. We did all the algebra that needed to be done, and even that was just hard arithmetic. Okay, so here we go. B, this was A, all of this was A, part A. Now we're going to do part B. Okay, T equals zero years. Now what this is going to be is A equals 58,000 times 1.00875 raised to the four times zero power. And that of course is zero. Four times zero is zero. So you can do this on your calculator. Let's do it, but you don't have to. And the reason you don't have to is, I just want to point out to you that 1.00875 raised to the four times zero, which is zero power, equals one. Every number except zero raised to the zero power equals one. So you're going to have A equals 58,000 times one, which is 58,000. However, there's no law against you putting it in your calculator, so let's do it. 58,000 parentheses, 1.00875, parentheses closed, carrot. Now, if you've already got a box up there, <clears throat> it's enough to say four times zero. 
and they'll stay up there. If you don't have a box, then you're going to have to put the four times zero in parentheses. Okay? Just so you know. So now, I am going to hit enter. And yes, 58,000 for the reason I said. This will be 58,000 times one because 1.00875 raised to the zero power is one. 58,000. And that's your answer for T equals zero. Now we go on. Okay. Now I am going to point something out to you. We could start all over again, 58,000 parentheses, 1.00875, parentheses closed, caret four times, whatever the next one is, three, T equals three. So I put a zero there. No, no, we're going to put T equals three. And in fact, well, no, I'm not going to do that for the following reason. There's a shortcut for doing all this. And I'm going to take the shortcut because once you're sure you're right, then that's a way to not have to make all of these uh, keystrokes again. Watch. If I use, this is the shortcut. If I use, if I click on the second key right here, click. And then I click on the enter key, click. I get back what I typed here. Only now all I have to do. Oh, wait a minute. You need to be able to see and you probably can't. There. Right. Now you can type all that in again, of course, except for the zero. But when I when I clicked on um, to, uh, second and then enter, I got all of this back. Now watch, all I have to do is click the left arrow key, click, click, until zero is covered by the blinking cursor. And since I'm looking for T equals three, and that's T, I'm just going to hit or click on three. How about that? And I'm going to hit enter. And here's my answer now. $64,391.80 followed by a zero so the zero does not cause that zero to round up. So, six, four, th well, I've got it right here, don't I? Six, four, six, four, three, nine, one, eighty. I have a better idea. And that way, nobody will forget, including me. No, no, I don't want that. We're going to do this just so you can see. Right here. We're going to put it right there. Flatten annotation, yes. 
All right, so here's my answer right here. because I want to be able to um, let people who are watching this and who are reading the notes afterwards to realize that um, uh, this is what I got on the, on the calculator. However, I will also write it over here. A equals 6,000 and that dollar sign will already be provided for you. 6,400, 300, uh, 6,000, 64,000. Well, all right, talking and writing. They're very dangerous, dangerous combination. 64,000, 391 dollars and 80 cents. Okay, now we move on to T equals seven. Going to do the same thing, watch. I'm going to click on the second key, click, and then click on the enter click enter key click. I get just what I had in the immediately previous line. Now I'm going to back up, cover the three and type seven. I'm going to back up, cover the three and type seven. OK. Back, back. Seven. OK. Enter. That's how much money there will be after seven years. So I'm going to. If I copy that, it'll be gigantic. So I'm going to copy this. Pull that down. Click. And. OK. Flat. Now here's my answer to T equals seven, which is A equals seventy four thousand twenty three dollars, twenty three dollars and eleven cents. OK, but I am going to also circle. That now there's only one to go. Let's see, 10. We have to put a 10 in where the seven is right now. OK, so I'll write T equals 10. And let's do it. Second, enter. Back, back. One, zero. Enter. 
and here we are right here. 58,000 parentheses 1.00875 parentheses closed raised to the four times 10 power. Notice you don't even really have to multiply these. I didn't even think about it, but I could have said four times three is 12 and four times seven is 28. I could have used the answers in there if I'd wanted to, but there was just no particular need. Isn't that wonderful? I could make this 40 if I wanted to, but there's no need. So let's hit enter. 82,180 dollars and 71 cents followed by a two, which will not cause the cents to round up. So 82,000, well, that's right. I'm going to copy it so I don't have to remember it. I love technology when it works. I don't love it when it doesn't work. I guess I don't do unconditional love. Not of technology anyway. Okay, come on, I want these to kind of match up. All right, so here's what our answer is going to be. $82,180.71. A equals dollar. $82,180.71. And we are done with this problem. Yay! So notice we kind of sort of did the same thing for B over and over again. For A, we had to find the formula that we could use to give us our answers. And in B, we just had to do all of the calculations. OK. Now we're going to do it all again. Let me clear this so that it will be ready for the next problem. OK. Now, this says we're going to be compounding semi-annually, so n equals 2. What this says is this, interest is compounded semi-annually, and then you have a table. The principal is 2,000. The rate of interest is 7%, which is 0.07. And the time is three years. The compounding period is twice a year, semi-annually, which is two. And so I have to use my general formula to find my specific formula. A equals P parentheses one plus R over N to the n t power. Okay, a equals 2000, parentheses one plus 
0 0.07 divided by 2 to the 2t power, where t is 3. But I wanted to write the formula first, okay? That's my mean math teacher, Mr. Stewart, from high school, yelling at me, threatening the class. I've talked about him before. Okay, let's do this. I could, if I want to be radical, you know what? I'm going to do something that would displease the book. I'm not going to write out the complete formula because I really don't have to. Watch. P is 2,000, okay, two, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. There we are. 2,000, parentheses, one plus 0 0.07 divided by two, parentheses closed. Carrot, this guy's called a carrot, two times three, which is six. I could type six or I could type two times three. Doesn't matter. Enter. $2,458.51 is what you get after a mere six years. Considering, I mean, let's be serious here. Considering that you put in $2,000 you waited six long years, and all you got back was 2,458 and a half? Really? Um, that might not have really been worth your while, huh? Well, us rich people don't have a lot of alternatives. All right, let's see. Am I going to save that? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay, and because you're dealing with money, almost all of these, unless the instructions say something different, you're going to be rounding to two decimal places. So that's going to be 24, 58, point 51, and I don't really think you have to put in a comma. I would say try it without the comma. And then if my math lab says it wants a comma, go ahead and put it in. But here's what we did. This gave us all the information we needed for the general compound interest formula. Once we put all of our information in there, and I could have completely skipped that step and gone right to here. So I could have just filled everything in and thrown it in my calculator and gotten this answer. Let's go to the next problem. Compounding daily Oh my, okay. It says use the compound interest formula to find the account balance A when P is the principal, R is the interest rate, N is the number of compounding periods per year, T is time in years, and A is the account balance. 
all of which you already know. So let's write down the general formula. A equals P parentheses one plus R over N to the N T. All right. N is going to equal 365. Ooh. T equals four. Ah, but R is going to have to be changed to 8.2 divided by 100. And that is 0 0.082. That's what your R is going to be. And your P is 10,274. So what I'm going to put in the calculator is 10,274 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.082 or 0 0.082 divided by uh, 365 raised to the n 365 times t which is 4 power that is so ugly Thank goodness for calculators. Now you can figure out all this stuff in advance if you want to, and then put the finished product in the calculator, or you can do what I'm going to do, which is 10,1,0,2,7,4. Parentheses, one, plus <coughs> water. Oh, better than that, coffee. All right, 0 0.082 divided by 365, close parentheses, hit the caret, 365 times 4. All right, and before you do anything, make sure, make sure you really wrote what you wrote here. It will be worth your while if you write it all down by hand first. 10274 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.082 divided by 365 close parentheses, raised to the power 365 times four. I wonder if it'll be, if the answer will be millions and billions of dollars. Let's see. Enter. No. It's only about $4,000 more. Not that I mind $4,000, of course. Wouldn't say no to it. All right, here. Oh, wait, I didn't. I keep forgetting about bringing this up. There it is. For those of you who might want it written more largely, larger, written more, written larger. Yeah, I guess that's right. OK, now, uh, uh, oh, I just saw something, so it's good to look at a bigger picture. 72 cents is followed by an eight. The eight is going to cause the two to round up to a three. So we'll have 73 cents, one penny more. Okay, here we go. Print. 
put it over here. That would make more sense. And then it's not enough. It's not enough to just put a little box around the answer because I have the rounding up. So A is going to equal 14,261. 0.73, and that's read $14,261.73. And that's your answer to this. Your account balance after four years, when, you're compo when you're, your money is compounded every day, that is your interest is compounded every day and added back to the A. All right, and that's your interest rate. And that's your principal. And yeah, your interest grew from 10,274 to 14, I mean, with your interest, your balance grew to $14,261.73 from $10,274. So you made a little under $4,000. And then finally, here's a business kind of problem that's not a straight out money problem. The demand for lumber is increasing exponentially. That means it is increasing very fast, just like the graph. That's the demand. Um, now let's erase that because, well, okay, the amount of timber in in billions of cubic feet consumed T years after 1997 can be approximated by this formula, where T equals zero corresponds to that very first year, 1997. Okay. And I didn't look and see what they're asking for. So I'm going to make something up. In, in the year 2010, assuming the demand keeps up, That is, it keeps growing. And by keeping growing, I mean according to the formula we're given. How many billions of cubic feet will be consumed? in 2010. Well, everything is based on 1997. So what T is going to equal in this formula, there's T right there. What T is going to equal in this formula is going to be 2010 minus 1997. So let us Put that in the calculator just to make sure we don't make a mistake. 2010 minus 1997. It's 13 years. 
So I'm going to plug a 13 in right there. So we're going to have n equals 64 times 1.018 raised to the 13 power. OK, let's read it again. The demand for for lumber is increasing exponentially. The amount of timber in in billions of cubic feet consumed T years af <clears throat> after 1997 can be approximated by that formula. Where T equals zero corresponds to 1997. So we're talking about, if we're talking about 2010, we're talking about 13 years later. So I'm going to put this in the calculator. 64 parentheses, 1.018 parentheses closed, caret 13. Okay, well, here's what we've got, and then we'll talk about it. Bring it down here. Right there. Make it a little bit smaller. OK. Um, I believe that probably they're going to want us to round to one uh, to the nearest whole number or the nearest whole number of billions. Well, that seven is going to cause the zero to round up to a one. So our answer is going to be. 81 billion cubic feet of lumber. Of lumber. OK. I believe that's the last problem. Yep. So I'll get rid of the extra pages. So notice this did not use the compound interest formula because this it uh, this formula comes from something other than calculating interest, something other than banking. This comes from supposedly the lumber industry. Now that might or might not be true. Usually when problems are true or they're based on a true statistic, you see the, uh, the source material written very small in italics underneath the problem. OK, this is it. Notice that we did all of these problems the same. Especially the compound interest formulas. Now this was a little different. We had to calculate the years. It wasn't enough to say 2010 up here. Because 1997 is the beginning year for that formula. And you're going to find if you go into economics, you know, a career in economics, um, a career in accounting, or a career in banking, that most formulas have a beginning year because they're based on reality.
But almost all of the, I mean, all, all of these problems until the last one is compound interest, all of which can be done rather quickly on your calculator. Now, Melissa was another one of those where to find the year we had to um, uh, uh, subtract the beginning year from the ending year to find out how many years we're talking about. But other than that, we are done with compound interest. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about the inverse function of exponents, of, of exponential functions. We're going to be talking about the inverse function of exponential functions. For instance, I'll just give you a for instance, because that might actually whet your appetite. Tomorrow. You're going to find out all kinds of interesting things. Like for instance, if you have this exponential function, then it's inverse. Well, wait a minute, let's write this the right way. If f of x is 10 to the x, then its inverse function will be log x. And if you have the function g of x equals e to the x, then its inverse function will be the ln of x. And if you have a function h of x equals 3 to the x, then its inverse will be log base 3 of x. So from here on out for the rest of the semester, there's going to be a lot of really strange stuff to learn. So I hope you enjoy having your brain stretched. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Okay, have a good yep. day. You too. You have a great day. You too.